Yo, what's up guys, your boy Kildra here, and today I'm going to be giving you an After Effects tutorial. I haven't done one of these for a little bit, but I recently found out this cool effect to do, which is sort of a remake of this um, section from an edit, so I'm going to show you that now, so you guys uh, can see what I'm trying to do. But, if I go into there, so, the section coming up, you'll see the ACOG clip, and basically I'm trying to recreate sort of that, so... Look. Right there with the logo in the um the ACOG site. That's what I've tried to do and I think I've done it pretty well. So if we go to here, I'll show you my uh, version of it. So you got the um that there like that. I don't have any RSMB on so it doesn't look as uh you know hectic as the other one, it's not time framed, it's just the raw clip with my uh, logo on it as you see looks like that it looks pretty good I'd say so um yeah so I'm gonna show you guys how you make that um it shouldn't be really too hard it, it does quite take quite a long time so this will probably be split up into a couple of sections but first thing we're gonna do is we need to track the arrow in the middle so that we can uh, attach the logo we're going to use to that. I'm just going to use my Killjoy logo again because I know that works. Basically what you're going to need is first of all an ACOG clip which I have here. Looks pretty good. Um, just hopefully the background isn't too similar to the, um, the arrow because that can be a bit awkward sometimes but uh, in general you should be okay. And then you need to have a logo that has like an outline to it. Well, I mean, if I use if I use fill when it loads and I can show you what sort of what I mean by like an outline so give it a moment because After Effects always takes a while to load up the effects and presets just have a drink of my coffee keep me awake it's like nine o'clock in the morning I usually record videos earlier but today I felt really tired so I didn't do it until now, so we'll give it a minute. My computer's really slow, and uh, <laughs> it probably doesn't help that I'm recording, but whatever. So we got that there like that. If you type in fill, and then I'll actually. Ooh, the logo is. That's the logo? Well, that's not the logo. But, um, drag that on there. Nah, okay. Anyway, I don't know what's happening, really. I do not know. Um, oh, well, it'll help if I actually turn down that. But, yeah, so if you grab the logo, put it into there. You can see that is the outline of the logo. Ideally, you'd want to have one which is a bit, um, a bit bigger, like a big, more, th like, a, you know, a thicker, mm. a thicker outline. Because this I find, well, I found was a little bit too thin. Um, but you can compensate with, you know, effects later, which um, sort that out. So, what we're going to do first is just, you know, delete that. You don't need that just yet. What I'm going to do is go to when you first and last see the ACOG. So that's, you know, the, um, the red dot. So, that's where you see it. So, go one frame forward. Control, Shift, D, split the layer. So, that layer is... um. You know, non, non, I, you know, th th this one doesn't have to be tracked. Go all the way back to, um, where does it start? Just by there. So, if you go then down to where it is, Control Shift D. So then that section is the only one that needs to be, you know, altered with. The bottom two, you know, you're good. You can, uh, you know, even change the color on them if you want. Um, Change to cyan, cyan, whatever. Um, so yeah, you got that. Now what you're gonna do is you have to track the the red dot. Oh yeah, red dot. We'll call it the red dot, whatever. I, I, otherwise, it's gonna get annoying. So, I'm gonna use the top layer, like so. It's got this selected. So, what you're gonna do? Current track, uh, tracker one. Uh, you know that will just start it out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to track motion. 
You just want to have the position because you're going to do the, the scale um, manually. And trying to do the scale on this one is a bit a bit awkward. So you're going to put it like right on the tip. That's where I'm That's where I'm choosing to have the marker. And then you're just going to click the back arrow. So it'll analyze backwards and you see it tracks it pretty well. But when you see that it goes off like there. You can actually click U. So, one minute. Don't click U. Um... Here we can see that this keyframe is the last one before it goes off course. So, Control Shift D there, and then go into this one, click U, and delete the tracks on there. Then do the same thing again, and do track motion. Drag that down onto there. Looks pretty good. Then just track back again. And oh, you see there, it, it stopped a little bit again. Um, this is just what we're going to have to do, it's just going to go back and forth really. Um, when it, you know, when it does the explosion it's a bit awkward so we're just going to leave it right by there, Control shift d uh, delete the motion trackers on that layer, that looks good. Um, yeah, okay, so we're actually then I'm going to choose it from the forward one, just because why not. I prefer to do backwards to start off, just, you know, if it can go all the way through, it's good. But with your footage, especially, you know, obviously if they shoot, you're probably not going to be that accurate. And uh, that was a really bad uh, point to track at the start then. It did not work, so click U, and just delete it, and then you can just redo it. That's the way I do. That's what you have to do, really. You're not going to get it right first time. Just try and get it, you know, somewhat accurate. And you should, you should hopefully be able to uh, track it. Hopefully. <laughs> it shouldn't be a, too much of a challenge, however. I am struggling a little bit right now. So, you know, these first few frames just don't want to track for some reason either way we'll just delete that well delete the tracking point we'll try go hmm I was gonna say we'll try go backwards from there we'll try go backwards from here control shift D uh, motion track motion get it right on the right on the edge there and have it go back you see and it tracks it pretty well when it actually does get tracked and then you see it just lost it then it's lost its way so there's the last time you actually have the uh, track on and yeah this effect I kind of had to figure out on my own I didn't like copy it from anyone I am um, well apart from obviously you know took the inspiration from that edit but how to do it I I'm pretty sure I'm the first one to well if I was gonna say first one to find out or realize but I'm the first one that I know of to uh, actually do a video or anything showing how to do it so that's kind of cool but yeah my tracker is uh, not very accurate this morning for some reason it's I'm not quite getting it on point so do that track backwards mm, it's not quite working but when you do it it shouldn't be too hard um, just because I'm failing right now, it, it worked for me before, as you guys saw from my, uh, you know, the edit which I used. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete these, go into my layer where I already have them, all done. And I'm just going to take them, because it's basically, you know, it's the exact same thing, it's just a bit quicker for you guys to watch. So, if you highlight them all and click U, you can see that I, do, I have keyframes. At every section, this top one accidentally has like all these ones as well. But you see on the bottom ones, I have you know all the the parts are marked. So you can't tell right now, but they are. They are. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna change that to red, and we're gonna drag on our logo. And now I'm gonna cut it up into three sections after we change the scale to 18 which I found good for this logo that's just the way this logo likes to work I don't know why but 
18 seems like a really good um really good size for the logo C. It's pretty good. And uh, yeah, so that's all for that. You're gonna have to put effects onto it later, but you know you'll do you'll do that later. So forward one actually no. Um, yeah, that should be good. Yeah, and go to here. Control Shift D to split it. Split. Oh yes, yeah, split it again. Go to here, split that again, and then you should be good for the rest of it. So. As you see here, well, they're all going to be in slightly different positions because, you know, the arrows are in a different place each time. So, on your first layer, like I have here, you're going to click U, and you get all these um these keyframes, which are for the tracker because that's the only effect we have and the only thing that's actually keyframed on the layer. So, go to the attach point, just make sure you, you know where that is, go into your logo, click P. Alt tap no alt click alt and the um the stopwatch to make it go red like that and then you should have this expressions bar. Grab this tool called the pick whip tool, just drag it onto the attach point, just like that. So now it should be tracked to where that is. Which is pretty cool. Um let me just uh turn that off. But um yeah, so you see it's it's perfectly tracked, the only you know, kind of off part is where he shoots. But you see there it actually looks pretty good. So what we're going to do actually, just while we can, is if you go on to A, click A, that changes the anchor. You can just move it up a bit and try and center it if you want. You know, just alter the position of it without actually altering the proper position. This is just the anchor, where the center point is. Um, so you see there. I zoom out a little bit that is completely tracked to there bang just like that it's flawless so then we're gonna go on to the second section click U on there um, a P on there just the same process over again and then you're just gonna do these do this for the next four frames well, no for the next um what do you call it the next four Oh, well, the next two layers after this, but all four of the layers, you're going to have to do this for, so I'll show you them now. Click P on both of them. U on both of them. I'll tab, oh, I'll tab there, I'll tab there. Pick whip, oh, to the bottom one. Come on, scroll, scroll for me, thank you. Right to there, like that. And, uh... Let me shut that down. So that one's tracked. If I go to you on there. And just get that one to the attach point. Then we're all good. So. Everything now should look okay. I'm just going to lower the quality a little bit. So I can render it. Well, run preview it faster. But as you see. It's tracked to the point. And see as it goes through. It should look pretty flawless. Um, and it's, you know, positioning and stuff. See, there it goes up like that. And then, does that, and he turns to the right and sort of, like, leaves. So, that looks pretty good. See here, bang, like that, bang, like that. And already, it's looking, it's looking okay. It's looking okay. But, what we're going to do is double-click on that. And, uh, we should, oh, no. Got we right click a pre compose, then do the leave all attributes. Okay, double click on that, change the composition settings so that its width is 20, you know, 1280 and 720 for the height so it locks the aspect ratio to you know 720p HD. Click OK, then you want to grab a fill. This is why I, this is why I got the fill, grab it onto there and see it turns it red. And change the scale because of the up size I had it. Changing it to 120 makes it like the full size of the comp, which I recommend you guys do. Because when you go back into the um, uh, we'll close that. When you go back into uh, here, as you can see, one it's red, and uh, two it's a little bit bigger than it was before. So 
it's, it's pretty good. This is like the this is the um the final size you're gonna have it, and you know you just want to have it a little bit just covering the middle, uh, like was in the edit. Um, but yeah, so that looks pretty good. You're gonna have to do this for each and every section, unfortunately, because you um you know because the way we did it, you're gonna have to do this. It is it is a bit a bit grueling, a bit annoying, but. I mean, a you have to do it, so I'm just gonna do it right now. There may be an easier way to do it, but I haven't found it, or well, I haven't tried to find it. So, if you guys have a you know an easy way of doing this, then by all means, do that. You know, I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. This is one of the ways to one of the ways you can do it. It's the way I found to do it. Um. As I said, it's probably not the fastest thing you can do, but hey, if it works and the effect looks pretty good, which I think it does, in my opinion, I think it look, I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. Um, then you know, as long as it works, that should be good. So, one final layer now, because we, you know, because our track was a bit off, we had to do it into four sections, like I showed you previously. Um, so. Pump the scale up. No, nope. drop the fill on first, I think. So, 120. Change the composition settings then to 1, well, 1280, not 89. And the height to 720. So, it's a 720p video now. And it looks pretty good. So, you can actually close all them down because you ain't gonna need them, you know. That's all you're gonna do, and just check that it's you know looks right all the way through. So that's pretty banging. That's perfect. Um, yeah, looks looks all looks all around pretty good. So next thing we're gonna do is we are going to uh, we can do the scaling. Actually, yeah, let's do the scaling. So for the second and third um section, I don't think much really changes. Um, however, on the well, no, actually, whatever, just ignore me. So, what we're gonna do is where you see the um the scope zooms in finally, which is there. That's the final stage of it zooming in, where it stays like that forever. Then, I'm just gonna go there and then go to where it zooms out. And let me see, ten maybe. I know you want to try and get it to a sort of scale. That um, it looks like it's zoomed out. So something like eight, maybe depends. You guys can mess around with that. Um, you know, depends what you think looks good. I think that looks that looks pretty accurate. So 